Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a short video tutorial about fast loops in Multimedia Fusion 2. Uh, it gives you a more accurate way of moving objects. Uh, I have an example here that's going to demonstrate first why you need them and then I'm going to show how you do them. This is a pretty simple example game. When you hit enter, a bullet shoots the player. If you hit spacebar, it's going to activate a shield or disactivate the shield. If the bullet hits the shield, it will destroy. If the bullet hits the player, the player is going to destroy. Okay, so if we show this, activate shields, hit enter, the bullets move pretty slow, they s stop. If I turn it off and shoot, it kills the player, which is what we expect. Uh, the shield is there to protect you, it's, it's invulnerable. However, let's make the velocity a little faster, like 6. Okay, then play this again, activate shields, fire. Okay, it stops still, which is good. Let's make this now 8. Play this game. Fire, fire. Oops. Let's activate our shields first. Fire, fire. We still die, even with our shields active. Let's turn this up to 10, even faster. Play the game. Shields activate. Fire, fire. It doesn't kill us again, which is kind of an issue. You as a player are going to be moving up and down and left and right. The bullets are going to be flying all sorts of different directions. It shouldn't matter where things are moving if the shield is going to work or not. It should just work all the time. If players see this, they'll think your game is broken or has a bug. It'll be very annoying to play. It's very unprofessional, and we have to fix this. Fast loops is pretty much the only way you can fix that. It's not that hard, though. Fast loops is a way of getting more accurate uh, movement out of things. Here, what the bullet's doing is it's moving from here and jumping all the way inside 8 pixels at a time. It's checking for collisions here, and then it jumps in, and then it checks for collisions. It only destroys the bullet if it collides with the shields, and it's jumping across the shield. So it's never colliding, it's never going to destroy. But it does hit you, which means you die. It's no good. So what fast loops basically do if the speed is 8, is it's going to move it 1 pixel 8 times. And it's going to check for collisions each one of those times. And the next frame is going to move you eight more pixels. And also still checking for collisions every single uh, increment movement. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So in the code, we're going to have to change this always. Instead of always moving, we don't want that. We want to move when the velocity is not zero. Where's my values? Values. Okay, when the velocity is different than zero, we're going to move it. And right instead of moving it, we're going to start a fast loop. That's under special conditions. This is where you find it. Fast loop, start loop. You have to pick a name. I'm going to call this bullet. I don't know. Okay. It also asks you the number of loops you want to do this. It's going to move one pixel each time. And if I want to go eight pixels, I need to go eight times. This is pretty much whatever the speed is going to be. So I'm just going to get that speed, because it can change. So whatever the velocity of that bullet is, that's what we're going to do. However, because it cannot run loops negative times, I'm going to take the absolute value of that velocity. So if the speed is negative 10, it will run it 10 times, moving negative 1 pixel each time. Okay. So now that the fast loop is started, we're going to have another condition where we test for that on loop and type in that same name again. So bullet. Okay, so on, we start bullet, on loop bullet. We are going to move it now. Okay, so position, set x coordinate to its old x coordinate. And then you can do minus one, which will work great. However, Usually bullets can travel in any direction, not just to the left. So from a fellow YouTuber, I found this, which works excellent. This is a way of taking that velocity and turning it into either a negative one or a positive one. And you do it by taking the absolute value of the value divided by the value itself. So this, if the speed was negative, it'd be 3 divided by negative 3, which is negative 1. Or if it's positive, you'd have just 3 divided by 3, which is just positive 1. Uh, so no matter what the value is, it's going to be either a negative 1 or a positive 1. And that's how many pixels we want to move each fast loop, which is perfect. 
So what we're going to do instead of a negative 1 is we're going to plus, we're going to do the absolute value, and then we're going to get the speed. And then divided by the speed again. This looks all complicated, lots of words and stuff. It's really not complicated. It's just our position plus one or minus one. And this is all you have to do. If we play this now, it should work just fine. So activate shields, fire. Oh, it's firing in the opposite direction. Let's make it shoot. Velocity is negative eight. Okay, activate shields, fire. It didn't work. Aha. Okay, it didn't work because we did not check for collisions during the fast loop. That's very, very important. So I'm going to take three down here. I'm going to insert an on loop. That same loop bullet. If you don't check for collisions at the same time, it's not going to do anything. So it's going to move it once, and then it's going to check for collisions. And then it's going to move it once, and then check for collisions. And then move it once, and check for collisions. Okay, let's test this out. Okay, it stops it perfectly. We can shoot a whole bunch of times, it's all going to work. We do have one problem, though. Usually bullets can travel at different speeds, which is going to be bad. Right now, if we have one bullet going at 2 speed and one, speed, one bullet going at 10 speed, all of the bullets are going to move according to this one loop. It's going to pick one bullet speed and move all the bullets at that speed. So what we have to do to fix that is make a fast loop to control all of the bullets. We basically have to do a fast loop within a fast loop. It isn't too complicated, so don't worry. So we're going to do an always. We're always going to start a fast loop. We're going to call it n bullet for the number of bullets. We're going to run this loop, count number of those objects. So if there's three of them, it will run three times. At the same time we do that, and this is very important, we have to have an, a value called id. And the same time you start that loop, you need to spread values into the id. Start at zero. If you check that does need to be first. So spread value first and then start the loop. Okay, so on loop. We call this n bullets. n stands for number. Okay, so on the on the n bullet loop, we're going to check if the velocity is not 0 and if it is, we're going to start that loop. Okay, which lets us start our bullet movement, which sets that. Normally, if bullets can go up and down and left or right, you're going to have to make two of these. One for the horizontal movement, which is what we have here, and one for the vertical movement. You do it the same way. You just have horizontal bullet and vertical bullet, and you start both of them right here. The other important thing we have to do is we only want to move one bullet at a time, not all of them. So we're going to insert here. We're going to see if the ID is equal to fast loop get loop index. And we need this the end bullet loop. Okay, and we do the same thing here. So when the end bullet loop runs, the first loop through, it will check bullet number zero. And it will do the movement and the collisions and then finish that. And then it will move on to the second loop through end bullets, which is loop number one. Then it will look for bullet number one and move and collide bullet number one, and then move on to the next. And incrementally do one bullet at a time. This line is pretty important that you only look and move the one bullet at a time. If you get rid of this, you're going to be moving all the bullets, not one at a time, which will break your game. So if you run this, it'll still work. And you can have a randomized bullet speed between 1,000, it's not going to matter. Every bullet will hit the shield and destroy itself. Nothing will be able to get through the shield now, even if you are moving. 
So in a kind of platform game, when you have more precise movements, lots of bullets, fireballs, and you are jumping across platforms, you're going to have lots of fast loops. You're going to have a fast loop for yourself, for the horizontal movement and the vertical movement. Each one of those is separate. You're going to have fast loops governing all the bullets, all the fireballs. If there's things falling from the sky, you're going to, uh, those are going to move fast loops. Fast loops are a pretty important um, part of programming. Uh, they are more precise movement, so if you want your character to jump on platforms and you need a precise movement so he stops at the ground and not in the ground and not above the ground, you have to use fast loops. So it's very important to understand you can try this yourself if you have a game that uses this. If you don't need precise movement, then don't worry yourself about it, but this is pretty important, so try to understand this. If you need more help, you know where to find me.